Hey, welcome back to Bro We Made, and today we are in the workshop and we are making an end grain chopping board. So this is a present from my mother that I've got to deliver in a week. So we're a little bit tight on time and we have a bunch of different projects in the workshop blocking my space. So hopefully we can get this done on time. Might have to do some sketchy things, but I have, well, today is Monday and I've got till Friday to complete this. So wish me luck. And I know a week sounds like a long time, but I do work during the day and my neighbours don't really like me working in my workshop past six o'clock. So I only have a few hours every day to do this, which is why I sound so concerned. If I had the full day every day, I would have been able to get this done in a few days, but that's what I was on about. Now that we're done with the surface planer, what we're going to do is cut these into roughly about an inch inch and a half long each and then we're all going to glue them up side to side so we have a nice long stick to put back through the surface planer and uh, as you can see now from the surface planer they all fit flush together so that'll make everything easier down the line so as i said i'm aiming for about one inch pieces i set my guide up wrong so it came out a little bit shorter than what i wanted so these are roughly about an inch and a little bit tall and to be honest it wasn't really enough i should have really cut them longer but if i cut them longer i would have had less pieces so the chopping board didn't end up as thick as i wanted it to uh, but you'll see how this all pans out all right so we have run into a slight issue. Um, I don't really have enough to make a significant board. This is the amount I have. As you can see, I could still make a chopping board out of it, but it is still very small. So I need to have a think about whether I'm going to incorporate another type of wood into it, or if I am just going to stick to this because I still have to cut both these sides you know to make these flush so that they'll be able to be pressed together so i am already going to lose probably about that much off the length meaning it's only going to be from there to about there and this is all loosely put together so it's going to get even more compressed so i really need to have a think about what i'm going to do with this right it's a new day i have came to my conclusion on what i'm planning on doing and uh, i am going to use this for the border and i'm going to carry on the end grain theme so i'm going to go ahead and glue up all the oak now and then i'm going to go ahead and mill all this up and glue all that up because by the time i've done all that hopefully uh, all the oak should be dry it is a little bit cold in the shop today but i'm hoping my glue sets properly uh, i don't think it's too cold i think we're sitting at around about 10 degrees or so so hope for the best just a side note, there's probably an easier way to glue all this up, but this is what I came up with at the time. So it is a new day. I decided against cutting and milling up this yet, since I figured out I probably best get the final dimensions of what I actually have and glue everything up before moving on to that. So I don't accidentally cut too much or I need, you know, realize I might not have enough wood or, you know, what, you know what I'm trying to say. So the next step is what we're going to do is I'm taking all of these out of the clamps. As you can see, they're not perfectly flat edges. As you can tell, looking down there, we're not going to get a seamless glue up with them together. So what I have got is a surface that I know is flat. And what we're going to do is we're going to hot glue these down to this. All them up in a row like this. And then we're going to run them through the surface planer so we can get one side that we know is flat and we're going to flip these over and then do the other side and then we can glue these up side by side and then we can square up around the perimeter so we'll go ahead and do that now So in my head at the time, I thought this was a perfectly sound idea, but you'll see in a second. Yeah, didn't quite go very well. 
because these are such short pieces all glued together it rotated very easily and just ripped the hot glue out of the board so I tried doing it again but that didn't go very well either so I had to come up with another solution right so <clears throat> the service planer was a bad idea it has just absolutely torn everything to shreds as you can see well look at it it's all everything is just broken apart one thing I am happy about though is none of it broke at the glue seam so at the very least we got a good glue up we're just gonna have to glue them all back together now it's a bit upsetting but we'll crack on with it so like I said I'm happy it broke at the wood and not the glue seam so that means we got a good glue up but you can see how badly it just it, everything just exploded so I decided just to go ahead and glue all these back together I didn't bother cleaning up any of the edges because they fit together quite flush anyway so I decided just to go ahead and glue it because I can always cut it back apart and do it properly but you couldn't even see these glue seams once the uh, board was finished so I think this was the right move to make here since I didn't have a lot of scrap pieces left over. So while that was drying I was having a little ponder thinking how am I going to square all of these up so I can get a nice seamless glue up. So I was just going about sorting all these out and staring at the little blocks of wood I had left over and I decided I was going to go ahead and use the table saw. Right so my plan now is I'm going to make a jig for the table saw. The only thing is, my table saw is very bad. Uh, it doesn't stay at 90 degrees. It's a very, very cheap table saw, so I never really get a, a good enough straight edge on it. But I guess if we're careful, we might be able to just get it done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little jig. Uh, I know these two sides are parallel, and this is a straight edge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a way to fix this down to this and use this as a straight edge to push through the table saw and get a nice hopefully clean cut there if i have to go back over with a bit of sandpaper it should be fine i could run the th run it through the uh surface planer this way but because the grain's running this way i am worried about tear out and how it's going to like you know it might just catch it and just split it down the middle so I'm just going to do it like this and hope for the best. So I've gone ahead and I've cut all the sides up. But like I was saying before, my table saw is very, very bad. So I'll show you. This is the sort of like cut finish I got. And also, even though my saw blade is square, as I will show you now, saw is so shit that the blade just gets pushed over so i'm gonna have to arrange these in a pattern to hopefully get these as flat as possible because obviously they're touching at the bottom but if i flip this one over you know i can get them to meet up flush so i'm just gonna have to work out how i'm gonna glue all these up glue them all and then run them through the surface planer like that to get it nice and smooth I hope the service planer can handle end grain oak. So, see how that goes. Also, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little bit smoky in here as well. So I arranged these in a way where they would be as seamless as possible, but you see in the end, it wasn't perfect, but it's the only thing I could do. Right guys, nothing seems to be going right with this project. Uh, this is very frustrating. This is the first time you're trying to do anything with end grain, so I, I guess it's a big learning curve. But um, because of the inconsistencies that my table saw left, uh, when I'm trying to clamp it, you can see in some places it's cracked. Where's the crack along here? Yeah, there's a crack there, and that side's burst open. There's a crack along here, that's burst open. There's a crack there, that's burst open. I'm just going to let it dry and just let it do its thing, and then... I'm either going to fill these gaps in with an epoxy or I'm going to try and clamp it back the other way. 
I have tried to mitigate the cracking with this, but it's still happened. So I'm just gonna let it dry, run it through the surface planer, see what it looks like, and then see what I can go through there. So while that is gluing up and drying, I'm gonna go ahead and mill up some wood to do around the borders. Uh, all this wood here is from an old table I managed to salvage. Uh, I'm not sure what it actually is. It's quite a soft wood, like I can dig my fingernail into it. And uh, yeah, the grain on it's quite tight. It's very red, like a cherry or redwood. So if anyone in the comments knows what this type of wood is, uh, let me know and leave a comment, as I have quite a lot of it. Right, so what you just saw there is me milling up that uh, piece of wood. Uh, managed to get it squared up on the uh, was that table saw. Uh, that's just because this wood's a softer wood, so the blade doesn't bend out the way. So we've got some nice square pieces. Well, the rectangle is what I mean square is, and you know they're all 90 degrees. And this is roughly what we can do with the amount we have there. So that can go inside of this. I'm still not really too happy with it. I want it to be slightly longer and I don't really know what to do. I have got some more oak scraps over there. I'd ideally like to save them for another project though. So I'm gonna have a, a little think about what I'm gonna do while that is gluing up and I'll get back to you when I can. Right, I've decided instead of using these for the sides, I'm gonna take them out. I'm gonna t keep these two here because I like the uh, the width of it, but I'm gonna use this, which is the same wood as this. It all came off of a, a table uh, that I managed to salvage. And I'm gonna cut the chunks from this because it's a little longer and put them on the side. And if I have to put these back on the end, it's gonna look very mixed match, but maybe it looks good. I don't know, we'll, we'll see at the end. So I'll get back to you when I've cut all of these bits out because this video is getting longer than I thought it was going to be. So back with you in a second. Right, so this is what we're going to finally go for, I think. It still is a little bit too long in here, but what I've decided is I'm going to glue up a separate piece and then cut it in half, put them on either side of there to make up the rest of the space. But I think this is a good size chopping board. It's not too big, it's not too small. It, it's just there so this is still gluing up waiting for the glue to dry it's probably safe to take it out of the clamps now since you know all this isn't going to dry for a long time but the stuff in between probably is dry so take this out and start milling it up and then as i'm milling that up i'll glue all these together and then i can mill all that up and we can do the final glue up and then send it through the service planer So again, I'm going to have to use the dreaded table saw since I don't really have that many options. But what I'm going to try and do is get the rough shape and hope I can get it as square as possible on the table saw. And then hone it in with a belt sander. And this ended up working. It wasn't absolutely perfect. But it was better than what I could do with just the table saw alone. As you can see on the sides, the wood is very burnt. So, yeah, and I also decided to try square these other bits up with the belt sander, but I took them out of the clamps a little bit too early and it broke apart at the glue seam where it was still wet. So I decided just to slap some more glue on there, clamp them up like that, and then put them on either side since I'm running out of time here and I need to get this project done quickly. So this is just what I came up with and it worked in the end so yeah not quite sure how well it would have glued up as there was glue already on the inside that was already tacky I don't know if I should have sanded that off I didn't so let me know down in the comments if that is a no-go or if it's perfectly fine so we've got we've got that glued up now uh, I probably didn't leave it in the clumps long enough, which is why, uh, as you saw, the two bits broke off. Uh, so I'm going to leave this in the clumps a little bit longer before I start going on the other one. Because I left it around about 20 minutes, which is usually okay. But I guess the workshop's a little bit chillier today. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to wait probably about an hour or so. 
before I actually start doing anything else. But we're nearing the finish line. We've got two, I think we've got one more glue up. All I've got to do is I've got to cut this uh, flush with the blocks and then take those out the clamps, glue them on either side. And uh, after that's dried, we can put it through the service planer and then get to sanding. And then, you know, see if there's any cracks or any small gaps that we've got to fill up with either epoxy or sawdust or yeah but uh we're slowly making it there the project's been a lot harder than i thought it would be but i'm a beginner and i'm especially new to working with end grain which obviously it's a lot more brittle and uh yeah we're getting through it but it, 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 it's been a headache so far Right, so I just came back to check everything, uh, you know, see if the glow up and everything happened. Can't do any more tonight because I've got other plans and stuff to go and do. And uh, I've realised I made a mistake. As you can see here, there's a bigger gap either side. And I'm thinking, where did that come from? You know, I measured it all. And then I remembered this piece. I was going to cut it in half and put it here and here. So... I guess we're just going to have this now. I was thinking about putting it on the two sides there and there, but that's a decent enough size chopping board, I guess. I can just, oh, sorry, I'm dropping the camera. I can just cut these two ends off and have it there, and I think it'll look half decent as it is. So what tomorrow's job is going to be is to cut this flush and sand both sides, do the same thing to these, and then glue them all together. So I used the same method as I did before. I took it to the table saw, quickly cleaned up the two sides and then got the belt sander just to get rid of the burn marks and also square up the edges a bit more. But be careful when using a belt sander because it's not like an orbital sander and it can hurt you. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, that did tickle a bit, but I protected myself and I carried on. So once I felt confident that I had all the sides nice and squared up and I went back and forth to the clamps to see whether it, it, you know, they'd stick together seamlessly dry and then once I found it was as close as I could get it, I put it all in the clamps and I just tightened it up, making sure not to do it too tight because I didn't want to burst any of the glue seams open since they haven't been glued up that long. Right, so the glue is all done setting up. Uh, I'm a little bit worried though, uh, we had a bit of a chilly night and usually with a tight bond, if the glue hasn't set properly, it turns white, but you can see a lot of it as, you know, dried yellow. So I don't really know what to make of this. It seems like it's glued together. So I'm hoping once I put it through the surface planer, it doesn't explode. But talking about the surface planer, we have this flat surface to glue down. As you can see, I've shimmed it on both sides so we can run it through the surface planer. I've got my hot glue ready to glue it all down so we can get one nice flat surface. All right, so off camera, I've shimmed it all and I've glued it all down to this flat edge. I've also, oh, my drill's fallen over. I've also chamfered all the edges here so hopefully it'll be all right i'm just going to put the planer way higher than it needs to be and i'm going to slowly slowly take it down so i'm going to try to take as many passes as possible to get this flat really worried at this point but we'll see how it goes i'm not going to claim that the bevel was my idea i actually did a little bit of research before doing this because i was that worried about breakout but bevel in the edges wasn't my idea so as you can see here guys with the first pass we did get a little bit of blowout on the end but the part where the chamfer was still there there was no blowout these got away a lot further but i can deal with these little bits here they'll they'll go while i'm squaring everything off anyway so it all went well for the first pass now we've got to do it for the back and take it away from the board so we'll do that so i took the flat surface off because we already have a flat surface to reference off and I did the exact same thing going very slowly with a bevel on the edge. Right, so we are done with all the surface planing. This is the thickness of the board. A little bit disappointed with how thick it is. I kind of wanted it a little bit thicker, 
but uh, I had to take it down that much because of all the inconsistencies and obviously I wanted the sides both flat and everything went well we didn't get a lot of chip out and uh, yeah so that went well but my surface planer broke again for the second time this year uh, the plastic fan that's on the inside of the motor has exploded again after I've already replaced it uh, I guess this is just a manufacturing defect somewhere if anyone else has a vendor service planer please let me know if you have the same issues because i'm gonna have to go and message the manufacturer again get the part and replace it all and it's so annoying to replace you have to take take everything apart re-grease everything it's it's just a pain so that's annoying and uh yeah we're just gonna crack on now we're gonna square up all the sides and then we're gonna start sanding it so I used my makeshift track saw to cut the two ends off because I didn't want to put it through the surface planer uh, lengthways because that's a bit dangerous. And then after I've squared everything up, I sanded it from 40 grit all the way to 600. And then I took some mineral oil because it's the only food safe finish I have. And I soaked it up and this board soaked up so much mineral oil. I think I ended up using like 500 milliliters on this, but it just kept drinking it up. Which is a good thing I guess because it means the board's well protected. But I didn't expect it to use so much. And here is the finished product. I think it looks really nice. I like how dark the border is with the light middle. But um, yeah. That is the chopping board. And I hope you liked this style of video a bit better than my usual ones. I tried you know, showing my face and talking to the camera more. The audio quality wasn't as good. I think I might need to invest in a mic to wear while I'm doing all of this. But let me know in the comments if this style of video was better. And if you want me to do more videos like this or more voiceover videos. But thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I'm very new. And I hope to see you around. At this time I'm sitting around about 500 subscribers. And I really want to get to 1000 subscribers by the end of the year. So... I'd really, really appreciate if you join the journey and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully I'll see you on the next one.